Joining us now to talk more about this is a former State Department senior advisor in both the Trump and Bush administrations, Christian White. And Christian, great to talk to you today. Thanks for coming in. Great to be here. Thanks. All right, so let's talk about this. You know, you're, you're a history, or a student of history. You know all about uh, the Khyber Pass and the graveyard of empires. Everybody from the Mongols to the British to the Soviets have had a lot of pro trouble in Afghanistan. And President Trump was elected. Part of his platform included withdrawing the U.S. from some of these military campaigns. Here we are 18 years after the 9-11 terror attacks. What do you think President Trump is doing right? And what do you think he needs to do better when it comes to the Trump doctrine? You know, I think that the doctrine, as it sort of is, is making itself clearer and clearer, makes a lot of sense. And it is important. It's not just sort of a PR stunt to declare victory in Afghanistan, but it's sort of plainly obvious that the original reasons we went in, which were to kill those who brought us 9-11, to, to stop them, al-Qaeda, uh, and also to send a very clear signal that hosting people who would attack the United States is unacceptable. Those goals have been accomplished. Everyone who was involved in planning al-Qaeda in, a very, in, a, in a, any sort of significant role is either dead or in Guantanamo. Um, and, uh, you know, there comes a point now where it's just sort of, okay, why are we still there? It was never really part of the plan, certainly never one that was explained to the American people or authorized by Congress to, to be there to turn the place into Beverly Hills. It would have been nice yeah. if we could have left a liberal democracy in our path, but um, that was never actually the goal number one. And, and that is an important point, and a lot of people forget about that. And Christian, I think the Trump doctrine came in even to a um, clearer, uh, clearer picture this week with the departure of John Bolton. And the president mentioned this. He talked about it today in the Oval Office. Here's the president. So John is somebody that I actually got along with very well. He made some very big mistakes when he talked about the Libyan model for Kim Jong-un, that was not a good statement to make, but he's uh, somebody that I actually had a very good relationship with, but he wasn't getting along with people in the administration that I consider very important. I have to run the country the way we're running the country. We're doing very well. We're respected all over the world again. You know, this is an indication, Christian, I think, that President Trump is getting back to what he talked about on the campaign trail in 2016. Uh, for Bolton, it's one thing to express a disagreement privately to the president if you're his national security advisor, but uh, reportedly, you know, arguing against getting out of Syria, insisting that there be a U.S. troop presence there, and then doing the same in Afghanistan, presumably in Iraq as well. You know, there's a saying, at least in business, that if everything is a priority, nothing is a priority. Um, and what right. our constant presence in these places has done is really distort our foreign policy very significantly. It's, you know, the time is now we really have to focus on deterring China, preventing war with China, right. rather than doing cowboys and Indians in the Middle East. Right. And, and that's an important point, too, Christian. And we'll talk about that a lot on the show, is that the real threat, the real threat right now we need to focus on is China. And, and President Trump is trying to do that with uh, his trade policy. Um, and, you know, as you indicated, it has distorted our foreign policy, uh, Afghanistan. Let's talk about the possible replacements uh, for John Bolton. We'll put some names up here on the screen. President Trump said there are five highly qualified people who want John Bolton's job. I would guess there are more than that. Here are some of the names. But, Christian, any name that you're hearing that you think would be a particularly good pick? Oh, I think a lot of the names uh, mentioned have uh, very strong qualifications. I think General Keith Kellogg might have an inside track and might be particularly good because, you know, Bolton, I think, served a purpose uh, when he was appointed because at that point Trump needed a gunslinger because he still had a Department of Defense that was intransigent. You had a Secretary of Defense, General Mattis, who did a great job killing ISIS, which was job number one, but he really didn't understand right. the president's strategic vision or the idea of repositioning the Pentagon for the new threat. Um, now I don't think you need such a gunslinger because the president has sort of reliable people at the State Department and Defense Department, someone who is a trusted confidant, um, you know, who he can bounce ideas around with. And Keith Kellogg is there. I think Trump likes him. He's already at the NSC. He's already in the White House. It's, you know, no uh, confirmation required, no security clearance required. Really, it's just a signature on the paper. So, um, but again, I think a lot of people under consideration have a lot of uh, talent. All right, Christian, thank you for your time. Great talking to you as always. And we'll check back in with you real soon. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing news channel. Newsmax TV is now available for free on your smartphone. Just go to your iPhone or Android store and download the free Newsmax TV app. Then you can watch free TV news with an American spin anytime, anywhere in the world. Newsmax TV, real news for real people.